Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is a little bit different. I've had so many messages from lots of classic students asking me the difference between all the different types of classics courses offered at Oxford because in the Literae Humaniores classics degree alone there are five different courses offered and it can get a bit confusing when you're looking at the website and you don't quite know what the exact differences are between the courses. So I thought today I'd get together some of my friends who study the different courses and answer some of your questions. So without further ado, let's get straight into the video. Hi, I'm Ollie. I was at New College. I just graduated and I was doing Classics 1A. I did A-levels in Maths, Spell and Maths, Latin and Greek. I'm Jemima. My course is 1B. I'm in New College and I took um, English Literature, Latin and German for A-level. My friend who is on the 1C course didn't have time to film, so I will be reading his answers on his behalf. My name is Odysseus and I'm reading CML. Classics in German 1, option 2. I went to school in Athens and did A-levels in English language and literature, Greek, German and history, alongside the subjects that were part of the Greek curriculum. Hi, I'm Joe. I was at St. Bennett's Hall. I was on Classics 2A and my A-levels were Geography, History and Classive. My name is Jenna. I did Classics course 2B at Jesus College. I did English literature, history, but like modern history. So it was like 19th century stuff, no ancient stuff basically. And then physics and maths. Classics 1A is for people who've done Latin and Greek A level already. And the main difference really is the language teaching that you're given when you turn up. And then for the first set of exams, you read more in the original text. So you have, have to read more Latin and Greek from your set texts and you have like a slightly different tutorial structure sometimes. But essentially after the first year and a half, your course is, ends up being the same as anyone else doing course one and normally the same as when it was course two. But the other thing with course 1A is, and I think also 1B and C, you have to do the finals both Latin and Greek papers. You can't just do all Latin or all Greek. One B is where you show up, you've done Latin to A-level before, but you haven't done Greek. So my course was different because I spent the first sort of year and a half of the course getting up to scratch with Greek. So having lots of intensive Greek classes alongside the kind of standard level of Latin work. Within classics, I applied for course 1C since I hadn't been formally taught Latin at school. And upon admission, I was automatically signed up for the intensive Latin course organised by the Classics faculty. I did straight classics up until mods, then switched to the five-year classics in German programme in Trinity of my second year. In my third and fifth years, I chose a combination of Lit Hum, classics and German papers, my time being more or less equally divided between the two subjects for the rest of the course. During my year abroad in fourth year, I spent 11 months in Berlin, where I was lucky enough to have completed two internships before the coronavirus outbreak and the subsequent lockdown. So course 2A is for those who haven't done um, Latin or Greek A-level at school. And so it's for complete beginners in either one of those languages. And 2A is specifically for those who haven't done Latin or Greek, but want to start off with Latin from scratch in first year. Classics course 2B, so course, course 2 in general means that you haven't studied an ancient language to A-level. And course 2B means that you choose to learn Greek from scratch, ancient Greek. So you have to do at least one ancient language throughout the course at Oxford. And yeah, so I chose to do Greek. I still never know the answer to the question. But I, I was always interested in going to Oxford and I was always interested in, do, in doing classics. So I thought, well, Oxford classics partially. Also, it's a four-year course unlike most other classics courses. And I thought that just meant you have a bit more time to study the subject because it's two different civilizations across quite a wide time range and there's a lot of different branches, especially, especially also that you're encouraged to do quite a lot of like variety of types of discipline. So philosophy, history, literature, linguistics, archaeology, art. So because there's such a wide range, I felt that it, in some ways it was better to spend a bit more time so you had studying so you'd have a bit more of a sort of understanding of the classical world when you leave. And then it's got a really, really large department. So I think it's the largest in the world, the classics. So there's loads and loads of teachers and that means they can offer a really wide range of papers, but also that there's a lot of students 
And so there'll be lots of students doing those papers. And it just makes it a bit more of an interesting community, I think, having over 100 in each year, and then plus master's students as well, some of whom you might um, meet in certain papers. An aspirational thing. Um, I really didn't think I was going to get in. So I thought, okay, well, I really like doing classics. I'm going to like apply for classics. And obviously Oxford has quite a good reputation for it. So I thought I may as well just like send in the application. And also I'm really bad procrastinating. So I was like, if I have to apply for the Oxford deadline, the early one, then I know I'll get it in like and not have to worry about it. So it was kind of like that. And then I looked into the course basically like after I'd applied and was like, oh, okay, this is quite intense. But like, you know, it, it worked out, it was good. Before applying, I was already aware of the relative inflexibility of the course at the pre-mods level and the rather intensive study schedule. But after meeting with college tutors and learning more about the course on one of the open days, I knew I could look forward to gaining a very good foundation in the languages and literatures I wanted to study. For CML students in the second part of their course, there was an extraordinarily wide choice of subjects on offer including a list of papers on classical reception not available to lit hum classic students. I initially wanted to go to Cambridge, but one of the things that put me off was there, the equivalent of course two is that you get put in a preliminary year, if you don't know Latin, where you spend the entire year learning Latin intensively. And then at the end of that year, you go into first year with all the people in the year below you. And so I didn't particularly like the idea of that. I was like, I actually, if I'm going to go somewhere, I want to be everyone on four years. I liked Oxford because it gave me the chance to learn both languages in the end. Not many of the other courses at other unis would have given me that, not from scratch. I was sort of drawn in by the whole idea of classics at Oxford. I think mainly because it was like the largest classics department in the world. So like that quite appealed to me, like having the sort of resources that comes with it and um, like being near the Ashmolean Museum. Like I didn't really realise before I was applying, but you can have tutorials and stuff in there with some of the materials. So that's, that was really cool to have that. If I'm being honest about it, really, it's just kind of my school was like, oh, like, if you want to, I guess you can apply to Oxford. Or, and yeah, I just, <laughs> I, mean, I didn't really expect to get in. So I didn't really think about like why I was doing it. I chose New College because it's really pretty. It has a large student body. The classics community there is really great. And it has lots of classics teachers. I think I just sort of, found it quite friendly and welcoming when I went there. I think people tend to say that about New College. It's also not completely on the tourist trail. While tourists do go there, and so you feel you are sort of part of Oxford, it's not so exposed to tour groups that you feel like you're in a sort of an exhibit, I guess. There's also loads of stuff going on. The facilities are really good. The architecture is really good. It's one of the colleges where I think have, almost has everything. New College, <laughs> they asked us an interview. <laughs> And, and my answer was originally like, oh, like the teachers, because I was like trying to be geeky. And actually it's because of the gardens, because it was where Harry Potter was filmed. <laughs> I was like, this is cool. Honestly, I don't think it mattered to me that much because I didn't, again, I didn't think I was going to get in. So I just, I went for like an open day and had a look around and it was quite pretty. So I was like, I could see myself wandering on the gardens. I applied to Merton College. I got interviewed at Merton College for two interviews. I then got interviewed at Queen's College for two interviews and then my final interview was at St. Bennett's. St. Bennett's is a bit different because it's not technically a college. In terms of student experience, near, near enough the same, like every member of St. Bennett's is still a member of the university like that. Now that, I, now that I've been there, I don't regret it at all. I think it was a lovely experience. But it's, it's not, you come in, it's not the typical Oxford experience. You haven't got your dreaming spires. You're not going to live in a, what, 16th century building. But actually some of the other things make up for that. first year I think I was a bit of a mess. We had weekly essays which in the first term was in, on the Iliad, the second term was on the Virgil's Aeneid and the third term was on the subject of your own choosing. But in addition to that we had, um, we had two faculty language classes each week and in college we also had language classes. We had reading classes where we'd sort of look at a section of a play or, a, or poetry in Latin or Greek and sort of go through it with our tutor and then we had rather unusually, because we had a sort of in, an interim tutor for a year, we had evening classes, which were they were they were quite informal, but nevertheless sort of made you feel you're quite quite busy with work all the time, with lots of sort of lots of text to be read alongside the reading classes, especially. So it was quite it was really fast paced, I thought, at the start. But then trying to juggle that with the weekly outing to Bridge, which is a club in Oxford, and then extracurricular stuff as well. 
So it was, it was really busy in first year. It was a fun year. It was definitely a step up work-wise, but I think in a good way because actually I look back on first year and think I learned a lot. So in first year, it was quite intense. So we had five Greek classes a week. So it would be not an early one. It was like 10 a.m. To me, it was early. <laughs> we had we had a sort of Greek class um, five times a week and that was all in the faculty. And then one faculty Latin class. And then we also had a couple of classes in college for language and then a couple of lectures and like the, the main tutorial of the week. So whatever like big topic we were studying outside of language. So it was quite language heavy, but then we'd have kind of like the essay as well. A combination of faculty and college organized language and literature classes, more or less daily. Around four to five lectures, one tutorial for which I had to prepare an essay of about 2000 words. A lot of time spent reading in the library, my room, meeting friends in Blackwell's for coffee breaks, and exercise. Every morning at 9am we had the elementary Latin class in a basement room in the faculty which was torture. Yeah after that I'd normally go to maybe a lecture or two and then sort of lunchtime and afternoons were spent reading for essays that week and language tutorial work and what I, I think I had about two shoots a week in first year. Uh, one of them would be like um, language stuff and the other one would be like an essay subject and so most of my time was concentrated on that um, and then all the other extracurricular stuff you go up to. So I used to go out maybe once a week in first year, which I can't believe. Rowing. It was a busy time. I don't know how I had time for all of it. Disclaimer, this was about five years ago now. So I might be a little rose tinted about how much work I actually did. So take this with a pinch of salt. But every day we'd have for the first two terms an hour's worth of Greek in the morning. So that's a class of about well, I think it was like six of us, six or seven, maybe a bit more. I can't really remember. <laughs> but yeah, so we'd have that for an hour, which was like a language class. You would do some grammar, like go through some exercises, hand in some homework and then get some homework back. So that was kind of cool because it, it was like a nice transitional stage from school where you'd have some regular contact hours. And I really enjoyed those classes. They were at 10 a.m. So it wasn't that early. Some people find that early. I think I found it very early at the time. I was very lazy. <laughs> and then usually, like every other day, like it wasn't every day a week, but you'd have some lectures like across town after that. I remember like rushing in between classes from the Greek class to exam schools, which is about a 10 minute walk away for a lecture. That was like my contact hours for the day. Usually they'd be over like in the morning. And then I'd have a tutorial about once a week in my first term. And then also for my second term, some of my friends started getting two tutorials a week then. And then by my third term, I had two tutorials a week and then another sort of like seminar class thing every two weeks, which I'd also have to produce an essay for. So for that one, I was writing about 5,000 words a week by the end of first year. But in the first two terms, it was like 2,000 words a week, which was fine. Yeah, I like did a university sport, so I had that training like once or twice a week, I think. And then just like at weekends, I think I try to take off generally like, or like work a little bit less. So I try to work nine to five on weekdays. And then on the weekends, like I tried to do a little bit less, like either because I was know hungover or like someone was visiting or something like that so yeah it was around that schedule so i think the thing i found what least well for me about the course was possibly that you do your exams at different times to everyone else in your year of entry so your first exams are in the second term of your second year and your final exams at the end of your fourth year so Compare that to almost everyone else who has, well, all the humanities students will have fir end of first and end of third, and the science students will have end of each year. But it sort of throws you out of kilter with everyone else. And so when you want to be sort of having a bit more fun, they tend to be, they tend to be working for exams and then the other way around. That's a bit annoying, I thought. But having said that, if you're in a college which has, you know, classicists as well, there are people who... A, understand and B, are like around and looking to enjoy themselves or 
work hard at those different times. If your college is large as well, it's not that much of an issue because people will be around. Sometimes it'll just be a bit quieter. I think the worst part about the 1B course that I'm doing is probably that you feel in the beginning like you have so much more work than everyone else because like in my college especially, and this isn't the case for all the colleges, but there are a lot of people who are who have come in with both languages and because of that, they kind of have fewer classes and fewer homeworks and like no vocab tests or whatever. Whereas as a 1B, we have so much more for the first year and uh, basically it's a little bit of a slog but it's kind of nice because you you can get yourself up to a, a pretty good standard at the same time you just have to keep pushing through and like fight against the machine and it's like it works <laughs> similar to other humanities subjects the fact that throughout the course there is only a single series of exams at the end of your final year which usually counts towards 100 percent of your oxford degree and in which you are expected to engage with and discuss texts that you are required to study sometimes two, or as in my case, even three years before taking your finals. And so when you get to two grades, they say you can choose eight papers out of 80. That's a lie, because the eight, 80 papers just include some different versions of the same paper. And because I was on course two, I couldn't pick some of the papers I wanted. So I wanted to do Greek tragedy, and I wasn't able to do that because it wasn't a translation version. I think the concentration of work, when it just ebbs and flows over different terms, like some terms are really, really busy, other terms you're not. As I think maybe I would have preferred to have been consistently less busy, but spread over all of the terms. I just think there's a lot of emphasis on language. You sort of hear about how big the prescription is, but I don't think it really took on board how big it was both for my first set of exams in second year, which were called MODs, and then for my final exams. I think if I were to change anything about the course, it would probably be just the prescription for those, just because like it was quite hard to catch up with the language. And eventually I did and like got two ones in all my translations and stuff. So it was fine in the end, but it required a lot of extra work like before mods and before my finals. So I wish that had either like not been such a big thing or that I'd like realised how much time it would take and I would have prepared a bit more for that. I think my favourite part of the course was probably the subjects on offer because there's a large part you get to do lots of different subjects and there's a massive variety but it also means you get to sort of um, engage with a lot of different tutors even though it's a quite a long degree compared to some others and you don't get a year abroad it means nevertheless there's quite a lot of variety so and also the fact that they, they do have world experts in every single thing they teach because the department's large. Honestly, I think it's that you're finding this like huge group of people who are all into like the same geeky stuff as you are. Because before I came to Oxford, it was pretty much like nobody I knew was like into classics. And there was like my Latin class, but like we, we were like, we were chilling with like Percy Jackson. It was great, but like it wasn't, you know, <laughs> into the text as much. And then getting here, especially with the other 1B students, people from kind of the same background. It's been really nice to kind of be able to like chat about all the stuff we're into and kind of get ourselves like obsessed again with all the same kind of stuff. It was really fun. For me, the best part about CML at Oxford is definitely the intellectually extremely rewarding one-to-one, two-to-one tutorials with academics who have often published extensively on the particular subject that interests you. This will of course tend to be very college and tutor dependent. To this, I would add the surprising variety of talk classes on offer, especially in the first part of the course. For example, archaeology seminars, philology and history lectures, tutorials, language and reading classes. The resources available to classicists and modern linguists at Oxford through Solo, the Bodleian Libraries and the Taylorian are truly outstanding. I did like the fact that you could keep it broad. So I, for finals I did two history papers, two language papers, two literature papers and two philosophy papers, which I really enjoyed. That was what drew me to classics in the first place. It's like four or five different subjects in one. I've, I've always liked the Romans and Latin and then getting to do them and Greek for the first time as well. And yeah, it's basically it's doing something you're passionate about. It's good. For me, definitely the best part of the course was the variety, like just the the range of different stuff that you can do in classics. Like it's not just a history or a literature degree or just a languages degree. I had never even considered archaeology as an option ever before. Like it was just not part of anything I did in school. Like there was no opportunities back home for that kind of thing. But I did like a Greek vases paper for my first set of exams. And that was, it was just so cool to be able to like, 
look at and handle like actual objects that were used by the people that we were studying and having the opportunities of like going to handling sessions in the Ashmolean and then looking at the statues and stuff there that was so cool and then being able to bring that into other parts of the course like I really appreciated like it was not just acceptable but like almost expected that you combine history and literature and art history and language and everything into all of your essays it was just really cool to be able to think about something as a whole culture rather than just like one aspect of it that was one of the reasons I applied as well I couldn't decide really between doing like English literature and history at uni and so whenever I found out about classics I was like oh man like I can combine both of these into it and then whenever I got here there was like so many other aspects that I could add into it so yeah that's what I really love about the course. <laughs> there's quite a lot of compulsory papers essentially there's two language papers in each subject there's an Iliad paper which is Greek and a Near paper which is Roman poetry this unusual combination of people, text and context, which is archaeology and literature combined broadly, of which there's a translation and an essay paper. And then I did optional papers, so or rather papers that I chose. A paper in comparative philology, which is essentially reconstructing the ancestors of Latin Greek. And I did um, philosophical logic with Viola, actually. And that's basically a philosophy paper, but classic shares all the papers with philosophy, or has them in common at least. So you can pick and choose from philosophy options as well. That was good because it was completely different. I did the standard that everyone does. And then on top of that, sculpture and Plato. I really enjoyed sculpture. That was probably my favourite one, which is really cool because it's outside of the kind of beaten path of doing languages and, and that kind of thing. So it was really cool to just explore something else. Mods, I wasn't particularly given much choice. In my college, it's sort of expected that most people do the same ones. And looking back, I don't disagree because they were the best ones and they had the best teachers in college for that. So for mods, the philosophy paper, I did Plato, Mino and Euphytro. Uh, because I was in course two, I did that entirely in English. And I think that's perhaps one of my better papers, although it was quite easy as well. For my special subject, I did Cicero and Catiline as the history paper. Quite a good one because it's so focused on one event, but you get so sort of like deep into it. For mods, there was a bunch of compulsory papers. You had to choose one in the language that you were learning as a course 2B, so that was Greek for me. So I chose Plato's Meno and Euthyphro, which is a philosophy paper. So you look at those two texts by Plato, discuss like both like general philosophical problems and how the texts deal with them as well as like looking at the Greek and the historical context and stuff. So again, that was really cool in terms of like it brought together a lot of different aspects of the course into one paper and that was really fun and interesting. And then the other paper that I chose, I didn't have to like have any language component for it. So I chose the Greek vases paper and that that was just honestly amazing. It just changed completely like what direction I thought I was going in the course. I focused on a lot more Greek stuff because of it. I did another archaeology paper at finals. So yeah, I really, really enjoyed that paper. I broadly went down the Greek route. I did a paper called Early Greek Hexameter Poetry, which is essentially very early archaic Greek verse main text, which is the Odyssey. And that was really interesting, I thought. It's quite, quite a theoretical about the genre, which I thought was good. I did Tragedy, which is 5th century Athens. That was good because you have to think about performance and theatre as well. It's not just what the text is on the page. So I enjoyed that one as well. I did a strange paper, which was called the Orestes Manuscript Paper looking at te the text itself and explaining or arguing for various variants that it might have. But it also involved doing papyrology and manuscript work, which meant basically transcribing quite hard to read Greek, basically. And that was really cool because we actually got to like look at the Oxford collection. They got a massive collection in the Classics Library, a paper Latin core, which is just a mixture of texts, both poetry and sort of prose. That was quite good because it gave you sort of a, a broader understanding of literature of the period as a whole and trying to forge connections between otherwise perhaps not so obviously connected texts. And then I did a paper called Latin Didactic which is again it's sort of Augustan and it fit quite, it fitted quite well with the Latin core. One of the things they try to encourage you to do is try and choose papers that actually 
have relevance to each other in some way. And then I was a bit more disparate than most, so I chose one history paper, one philosophy paper, and one linguistics paper. I did 5th century Greek history, which went well with my 5th century literature, which was tragedy. I did Aristotle, Nicomachean Ethics, which is a large text on sort of how to live your life. And as I mentioned, I did 5th century Greek history, which I have to say I found really very challenging. I struggled with it a lot, but I'm definitely very happy to have done it. One of my favourite papers was um, Greek historical linguistics. And that was basically looking at the evolution of the Greek language and where it came from. The other half of that paper was linguistic, detailed, looking at inscriptions in a range of dialects in Greek. I'm doing classical archaeology and Hellenistic sculpture, and then Hellenistic poetry, early Greek hexameter poetry, so like the Odyssey, and Plato, Aristotle, and Latin core, and lyric. Or tragedy, but I haven't decided yet. Doing Greek as a second classical language takes up two of your choices. So I had a verse paper and a prose paper. I did um, Roman history five and six, which cover um, 146 BC to 46 BC and 46 BC to 56 AD. So it's sort of classic end of um, Roman Republic, start of the empire history. I did Latin core, which is a similar sort of period in um, Latin literature. I did... Cicero the orator comes at Cicero from like a literary critical point of view rather than a historical or anything like that. I did Plato's Republic again in translation and Theory of Politics which was one of my favourite papers because that's a modern philosophy paper that you can do as part of classics. I had the um, in-house politics tutor for that one. It was really different. I got to go and see what PPE lectures were like. That was a really good paper for me. I learned Latin as well. I did Greek for the first two years up to mods. And then in my third year and fourth year, I started and continued to learn Latin. And that took up two paper slots at finals. So that was one for prose and one for verse. That was quite cool. And it was really cool to be able to learn both languages on the course. Apart from that, I did Greek art and archaeology, which is kind of like fifth and fourth century, all aspects of the artistic culture. So like statues, uh, vases, like architecture, all sorts of different things. So that was really cool and something very different to what else I was doing. So that made a nice like change of pace to be able to like look at some art history and objects and stuff. I did RH5, which stands for Roman History 5. That was like 146 to 46 BC. So like the fall of the Roman Republic, sort of Cicero's era. That was really interesting and cool as well. That was the one fully Roman option I did so that was again a nice change of pace to like the Greek stuff that I did and then I did a paper called Greek Core which is a literature paper and it kind of is self-explanatory kind of it's like you look at like core authors or like very popular authors and like get a general broad overview of Greek literature around the 5th century so that was like Thucydides, a play Antigone, we did some Pindar, I'm sure we did other authors but they're still in my mind <laughs> and that was really cool because I was able to bring in different themes from different parts of the course and talk about that while also doing some literary analysis which was nice, I really enjoyed that and then I also did GH2 which stands for Greek history too. So that's also the history aspect of the fifth century, basically. So that gave me a really good background for Greek core and understanding the like politics and the history behind the authors at that point. I also did another paper called Athenian Democracy. You'd focus more on like the politics of Athens and the political structures and how they changed and evolved from the fifth century to the fourth century BC. And again, that gave me even more context for like the three other papers I was doing in fifth century Greece. Yeah, they all kind of built and helped each other. And then I did a dissertation. Again, like as another aspect of Oxford, I really liked it was really flexible. I could choose whatever I wanted to write on. So I did how Virgil was read and written about in medieval Ireland. And I learned medieval Irish with the English faculty, like my course allowed me to do that. So. That was really cool. That was probably one of the most fulfilling parts of my course, like learning another language and moving in a different direction, but also using all my classical knowledge as well and building up on that. That was really cool. I like that one. <laughs> 
this was a while ago now, but essentially, for me, it was unseen translation in Latin and Greek prose and poetry. There's not that much you can do to prepare explicitly for that exam, because it is just translating in Latin and Greek. So inherently, there's not that much you can do. I think they provide a specimen paper, so worth having a look at that to see the kind of level that they Oh, get, try to get you to translate that because there's no point choosing the world's most difficult Latin if they're not going to test you on that. If they give you, say, like some, a propertious poem, you could pick another poem from that collection to practice. So you can do things like that. Normally it's a Greek tragedy, Greek poetry, read some Greek plays, often help thinking basically how the plays work, how do people tend to speak, those sorts of things, because often in some classical texts, the way that people write or speak is quite strange and like deliberately high register so i do that and the other thing i would say is just like know your grammar and things like that learn things that can make me reliably translate break down sentences because i think often when you see a sentence you can't translate it's quite easy just to, to, to panic or just try to randomly bring a sentence together but actually really thinking what's the subject what's the verb what does the what does this agree with and Often taking your time in translation within reason can make can make you actually faster because you can, if you do it methodically, typically that's, I think what they're looking for in these is a rigorous application of your knowledge of the language rather than just going, oh, that sounds a bit like what the story should be. I'd say read a fair few genres as well, just pick from some Latin love poetry, some Greek tragedy, maybe a bit of Greek history, maybe a bit of Roman history, just so you have an idea of what sort of certain sort of authors might sort of right like and what they might feel like i'm probably not the best person to ask on this because uh we we didn't have that many people who had applied for for oxford at my school and so it was it was a bit of a bit of a kind of chaotic thing where they just kind of stuck me in a room and i was like oh no we've got a test oh and just did it but i'd probably say in advance it's worth having a look at a couple of examples because they have them on the website i'm pretty sure i'm just having a look at what the kind of thing it is and even just having having a go at like a GCSE level one, an AS level one, you know, an old AS level one, like a little unseen thing and just having a go to get yourself comfortable in like the time frame. Because I really don't think it matters that much because I know I completely fluffed mine. It doesn't matter that much, but like as, as a combination, I think what they want is for you to show that you've tried and that you've kind of put in, you know, your thinking into it. So like writing down what you think as you're doing it even if you don't think you know the answer i think is quite important so yeah a little practice but not going crazy um i'm not sure maybe practice translating some euripides at home as quickly as possible there was very limited time during the actual exam if i remember correctly i had asked my classic teacher to mark a couple of translations i had done in advance of the cat and that was kind of helpful the best advice i got was so obviously you, you do the specimen paper you practice that if you look up the linguistics olympiad which is something that language teachers in your school will know about that sort of prepared me for the first sort of section first section or two sections is using like a made-up language or a non-traditional non-european language and so the linguistics olympiad sort of built into that and it was a good way to practice i seem to remember for us it was the third section of the paper was on different uses of wood there's um fowler's modern english grammar usage or something like that which i think is available online and is also in most libraries and that sort of helps set your mind clear about things about english that you think you know but you just don't know how to put into words i think honestly the best thing I did so I was really lucky to go on the unique summer school before I went so we went through a paper together and like looked at the answers to that but I think especially compared to whenever I did that there's a lot more past papers and like answer keys online so honestly just sitting down and doing low like as many of those as you can like literally all of them if you can that is the best practice because there is it's just like any exam, there's like a kind of trick to it. But also, I remember weirdly enjoying it because it was like a kind of like puzzle. It's not the end of the world if you don't enjoy doing it. I d obviously didn't enjoy sitting the actual exam. I was very stressed out. But like, if you're like interested in that kind of thing and like finding patterns and languages and stuff, like I think it's a good indicator about how you'll do with the language stuff. Definitely my piece of advice is to like do past papers and like look at them, look at the format, time yourself, get all of that down so that you're less stressed going into it because yeah it's going to be stressful anyway so you might as well preempt and reduce that as much as possible the most important thing to do is sort of do, do research on on why you might want to consider going to Oxford for classics because the course is it's different to other courses 
on the more language heavy side, which if it appeals to you is great. But you know, if you don't want to be reading quite a lot of the text in the holidays, it's perhaps not, not the best choice. And there are other great unis which don't insist on that. Um, but it's harder to get away from Oxford, especially at the start. I think that's one thing to consider. But, you know, it, it's incredibly rewarding. And you can say, well, I've read the original Iliad. I've read the Odyssey and original. I've read all of Virgil. Actually, it does enhance in some ways your understanding and feel for the, for the, like, for the text, I think. Also, you know, if you look at the greats options, so it's finals options, which I think you can find online, and none of them really appeal to you, then, you know, maybe you might go, well, actually, should I look, look somewhere else which does more sort of interdisciplinary stuff? So more things to do with classics and something else, although there are classics and English classics and modern languages, classics and oriental studies. I also think that when you're sort of preparing for interview or even a writing class for statement, make sure you sort of know roughly how the of course works. Because there's no point saying you really want to read Byzantine literature if you can only do that as one option of your eight in finals and you can't do that in mods, which is the first set of exams. But yeah, read around the subject, figure out what like might interest you at a later date because your interest will definitely change, I think. So don't go in thinking, oh, I've got to, I've got to say I definitely want to do this. When I went in, I didn't really know papyrology existed. I never thought I'd do any history papers. I never thought I'd do any philosophy papers. Actually, I didn't really think I'd, do, I'd enjoy anything as much as I did. I'd probably say it's worth reading outside of the syllabus when you're doing like A-levels and stuff, or, or pre-A-levels, like coming out of GCSE and starting to think about it. It's probably worth just following what you're interested in. And if you're, I think this applies to like most most courses but I found it especially helpful for doing classics is like just just following like anything that you're interested in in the subject and just like reading around it like reading some plays I found it really useful to read just like a bunch of sort of original plays and stuff like I read a lot of Euripides and stuff before I came because because you don't really get a very broad curriculum in the A-level and so it really helps you not only to have kind of something to talk about in interview or in your personal statement or anything like that but even when you arrive you kind of feel like you have a more broader grasp of everything so I think it can help on all the all the levels to just read around a bit. Visit Oxford on one of the open days, meet with and talk to tutors at different colleges. Every college does classics a bit differently. Classics is not as centralised a course as many subjects at Oxford, meaning that the focus is still very much on tutorials and small group teaching, most of which is often organised by the college and not the faculty. This could make a significant difference in your learning experience, especially in the first half of the course. Don't be afraid to just sort of read about any bits of classics that interest you. Don't think you've got to know about certain bits of classics when you're going in for your personal statements. I remember the tutors and some of mine were really interested that I'd not talked about classical Roman, classical Greek history. I brought in some other random things that I'd, I'd been to lectures about, I'd read books about. I'm fine, I didn't necessarily say them whilst I was here, but it was still like useful to know about. So I talked about, um, there's a legend that Britain was founded by Brutus, a refugee from Troy. And that's all contained in Geoffrey of Monmouth's History of the Kings of Britain, which is a medieval Welsh book. I'd read a bit of that, and so that went into my personal statement, and they were interested in what I thought of that. Uh, so yeah, so read around. You don't think you've got to read certain things, like there's no canon in ancient literature. There are so many different versions of everything. And yeah, and language is not the be-all and end-all. I think it's just cheesy, but... I wish I just read more stuff before I applied. I'd never studied a classical subject before coming to uni and at the interviews and the interviewers knew all of that as well. But there's just so much out there. There's so many like cool like translations, like Emily Wilson's translation of the Odyssey is amazing. And she does loads of like analysis on Twitter about why she chose certain passages and certain words. And so there's a lot of stuff like available online and things like that. Definitely would have like delved more into like looked up more reading lists and stuff on blogs and academic Twitter that kind of thing. With hindsight I would have delved into that more. But also in general just be confident about it like there's no reason that you shouldn't come to Oxford if you don't have the languages or if you've never studied it before. You deserve a place as much as anyone else here and you should be confident of that going into the interviews and doing any part of the application process. So yeah just believe in yourself. <laughs> which I haven't said, which I think I might not have given the best indication for, is you should definitely apply for classics because it's great. Even if you think, oh, so you seemed a bit negative, actually, it's a super interesting course. It's one of the best places in the world to do it. It's got a large community. All the tutors are actually pretty fun on the whole. 
I'd say. It's a more entertaining bunch of tutors than some other subjects, I think. Quite a lot of eccentric people, a lot of young tutors as well, which I think surprises people. There's some, there's loads and loads of really interesting and fun young classicists around. And the other thing is like, actually classicists are just quite fun people on the whole, I think. Typically it's quite a nice community, which you don't get for some other subjects. We always do classic socials and things, but I think it is actually a really great subject to be involved in. And if you don't like it, lots of the ancient stuff, you can always do quite a lot of modern philosophy. So there's actually loads of variety, especially if you're sort of interested in a lot of things and not exactly sure what you want to do. I think classics is not going to be a really good shout. It's basically all the subjects in one. I'd probably say, if you think you have any kind of interest in the subject and you have any sense of like, oh yeah, you want to be aspirational with it, it's worth applying. Because like, the worst that can happen is you get in your application early and you can just have a chill Christmas. And like, the best that can happen is you could end up like, surrounded by a bunch of people who are also obsessed with your subject. You'll be completely shocked and it'll be really cool. So yeah, I think it's always worth applying. I don't regret it at all doing classics. One of the most important things about university is you better do something you love. Otherwise, it's going to be three or four years of actual torture, I think. So make sure it's something you love and follow your interests in it if you get a choice in what papers you do. I just think classics is a really amazing course for like doing a lot of very different things and choosing a lot of things. So I think if you're having a hard time choosing between like some humanity subjects or even science subjects and stuff you can end up doing like kind of sciencey stuff there's like some theoretical physics paper i think you can take which is weird but if you want to go for it go for it or also logic you can do that as well which is a more sort of like stem based way of approaching philosophy but yeah overall the course is so varied and there's so many opportunities to do so many different things and also if you get in as well if you come here just make use of all the grants and stuff like there's so much money for you to just go on off to Rome or Greece or just have a holiday as well so there's a lot of opportunities that aren't just academic. I really hope any prospective classics applicants found this video useful. Be sure to click the subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this. Thank you so much again for watching and hopefully see you in my next video. Bye!